everyone is very welcome and that we thank God for the life that God has given you. We have a word from the living God today that is titled, Loving God is the Greatest. Loving God is the Greatest. Thank you, Lord. There is a scripture found in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and the verses 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. It says, To everything there is a season. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. There is a season and there is a time. There is a season for everything or to everything and there is a time to every purpose under the heaven. So from this scripture here, you can see how important time is. Time is important because then time is your life. He said to everything, there is a season that is time. And the time to every purpose under the heavens. So time is a factor that you cannot neglect because it is your life. You know, so your success in life basically is measured by how effective you use your time. Your success in life, according to this scripture, it is definitely going to be determined by how effective you use your time. You are definitely going to become what you buy with your time. You are definitely going to become what you buy with your time. So then, I said this before, that the greatest tragedy in life is a life without purpose. So a life that is being living with neglecting time. A life being lived without consciousness of time. That is definitely going to set your life with wrong priorities. Because you are just living. So then life's greatest challenge will be that knowing what to do at the right time. Knowing what to do at the right time. The book of Proverbs, Proverbs 20 and the verse is 18. The word says, every purpose is established by counsel and with God, I mean, and with good advice, make war. Let me read this slowly so we can really talk about it. We have talked about the purpose. That time, there is a time to every purpose under the heavens. And that there is a season for everything under the heavens. And the proverb says that every purpose is established by counsel. Every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice, make war. With good advice, make war. So, uh, you cannot have the purpose coming to pass, being manifested, being established without war. Amen? Without war. There are two things that you need to make sure that the purpose of God is established in your life. Number one, he said, cancel. You need cancel. Cancel is direction. Number two, he says, you need to war a good warfare. You need to war a good warfare to see the establishment of that purpose. Good advice make war. 
Good advice, make war. Good counsel, make war. So, definitely, it is not because God has said it that it is automatically coming to pass. You need to be having a clear understanding of the kingdom principle to bring to pass that it is written upon your life. Otherwise, you will definitely die even with many prophecies that have been given to you. It wasn't like the prophecies were not true. The prophecies were definitely according to the it is written in the book of God. This is the reason why the men of God were being revealed that word of God to you. What you did with it, it is according to what you do with your time, your notion of time, how you see time, how precious time is to you. You will definitely be moving, doing the right things at the right time and prioritizing the priorities and majoring on the major things and not majoring on the minor things. Very important. This is what brings to pass the purpose of God. This is what establishes the plan of Almighty God for your life. Therefore, last week we mentioned a scripture that I want us to dwell a little bit on this scripture today. The book of Titus, Titus chapter 3, and the verse is 8 and 9. Remember what we just read. From Proverbs 2018, every purpose is established by counsel. So Apostle Paul wrote a letter to the young man of God, Titus. He said, Titus, I want to give you a counsel. I want to give you advice because if you want to serve this God, our God is a spirit and we worship him in the spirit. We are in this world here. So many things are happening physically. You need to understand the spiritual principles that governs our lives here in serving this God. If you take good advice and war towards that advice, definitely the purpose of God for your life shall definitely be established. So he told the man of God, Titus 3, 8, 9. He said, this is a faithful saying. And these things... I will that thou affirm constantly. So, Titus, there is something that you must know as a man of God. And these things that I'm going to tell you, please take it serious. It shall establish your ministry with God. It's that it shall establish your life according to the purpose of Almighty God. So, what is it? He told the young man, Titus, that Titus, they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. They which have believed in God, they might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Okay, let's explain. We have believed in God, the door has been opened to us to come to the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Wonderful. But this is not it. Do you know that, by the way, our coming to Christ is not just a joke. He said that that covenant we were brought in by the blood of Christ. So a blood is shed for you to come in. You can't take that one for granted. But another time we will talk about this. He said, the ones that are in Christ Jesus now, they have to be very careful doing good works. Ah, is it not what God has called us to do? So what is this being careful all about in doing good works? So if I'm going to do good, should I be careful in doing good? Apostle Paul told the young man, yes, you have to be careful even in your good works. Why is that? And he said that, by the way, if you are careful doing or taking this advice that I'm giving you, it is definitely unto your good because he said it is profitable unto men. It is what? Profitable unto men. So verse 9 says, he said, but avoid foolish questions 
and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law. For they are unprofitable and vain. Let me explain this. You see, these two scriptures, one is saying the positive side of the advice and the other one says the negative side. If you don't take it, what is going to happen to you? So the reason is this. The book of Ephesians, Ephesians 6, from the verse 12 going, we all understand that he said we fight not or we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers and dominions and thrones and rulers of, of darkness. I mean, you just name it. Do you know that when we read such a scripture, we are only thinking of demonic powers like witches and wizards and the, you know, demons that we are fighting. So why is it that Apostle Paul telling the young man Titus that Titus you're going to also have to war about the advice that I'm giving you because even now that you have come to know the Lord, in your walk with God, you definitely have to be careful about certain devices of the devil against you doing good works. And these devices, these are some of the things that we don't necessarily pay attention because most of the time, we are watching, looking for demons. We are watching, looking for witches. We are working, looking to send fire to the camp of the gatherings of the wicked. And we don't watch these things that Paul is talking about. So what are these things that are enemies of doing good works? Enemies of doing good works. Paul said, number one, enemy of establishing good work in your life is called foolish questions. Avoid foolish questions in your walk with God. Everything that we are going to say, foolish questions about the Bible. So as you have believed in God and you are on the Lord's assignment and doing God's work, someone might just come around and say, ah, by the way, how do you know that there is a God? How do you know that there is God? Answer me. Apostle Paul tells you that anyone that will come with such a question, don't even bother. Do you know that most of the time, this is where we see ourselves as, <laughs> ah, thank you, Lord. Opportunity for me to convert this guy. Apostle Paul said, forget about it. Because everything that turns around us, everything surrounding us, points back to God. You know, 1 Corinthians 2, he said, no matter of fact, Romans 2 talks about there is no need for you to be looking for this God because the trees around you, the mountains around you, the sun and the, you know, the moon and everything testifies of God. So they know, but they come asking you, how do you know that there is God? It is not because the person wants to come to God, but he's, he, you know, he had already made the decision not to serve God, but he comes around and he wants to comfort himself in his decision. Paul said, Timothy, this type of people, they are wasters of purpose. Forget about them. Avoid them. Not just that. That is number one. Number two, he said, he talks about genealogies. Genealogies. And, uh, and uh, David, David was uh, the son of Jesse. And, uh, you know, and so what? At the end of the day, and so what? You can name all the lineage. And matter of fact, Matthew 1 starts by giving the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Knowing it and not doing what the Bible tells you to do. Giving your heart to Christ is not taking you nowhere. He said we have people like that. They can give you the genealogy of all the Bible history. And I mean, they go to seminaries, they, they study, and they end up even not believing in God. Apostle Paul said, please focus on the assignment that God has given you and don't waste time with the wasters. Number four, number three, he said, there are people, all they do in the process of you trying to do good is to contend with you. So he said, avoid contention. Avoid 
contention. They don't want to do the work. Or when they come, and they are, you know, the work of God is not by force. The work of God is by calling. The work of God is by calling. It's a ministry. So when you have decided that, oh, I want to be part of, let's say, a choir. You are not to contend with people in that choir. If you have taken responsibility in the church, it must be proceeded from your heart. It must be proceeded from your heart. If you are wondering, ah, why am I even doing what I'm doing? And this one is not even doing that. Everybody has left me alone and I'm the only one who is doing this. And so what? So what? Unnecessary complaints that are also coming from others and contending the ministry that God... You know the reason why I mentioned the first one? Because there are people that contend against themselves. He starts asking himself why he's doing what he's doing and why others are not coming to help him. And we have others that will not come. Why would I go and do this and all that? that I mean, no, they will even come to you and tell you, <laughs> are there not other people in this church? Are you the only one that can do this? The Lord said, if you have been called or if you have made the decision to serve this God from your heart, let it proceed from your heart and avoid any form of contention. Some will come to the church and they say that I am going to volunteer. Let me tell you, you said volunteer. That is the reason why you are constantly, you know, struggling within yourself. Because you are not committed. You feel like you are not getting paid. You know how the volunteers. The volunteer, unless it's truly, genuinely coming from the heart. And the person has a clear understanding of what he's doing. God is not paying volunteers. God can pay workers. And he doesn't even want workers. He only wants laborers. So if you are a worker, the Lord will pay you even though you complain. You remember when the Lord went to uh, early in the morning in the market and started bringing forth people to come and work. And the ones that started early in the morning and few hours before the end, he brought others in. And uh, those ones were paid at the same pay as the ones that started early in the morning. And they were like, why are you doing this to us? And the Lord said, I agree with you that I'm going to pay you such an amount. So why now you are bringing forth problems? These are the workers. They work and they are looking at time. Laborers, they don't care. They come, they know that this is what they have to do. They are even eating one sandwich with one hand and working with the other hand. They want to get the work done. You criticize them, they don't mind what you are saying. They have a business to take care of and they are taking care of that business. These are the people that the Lord is looking for. They don't look around to see who is doing what before they can work. They don't question themselves. It is the love of God within them that drives them to do what they are doing. So that is the number three people. The number four people, he said, avoid also they that strive. They are striving. Striving is a higher level of contention. Because the striving will fight the spiritual realm. He said that where there, there is strife, the spirit of the Lord is not there. So this one is also very dangerous. He said, avoid those type of people. Hallelujah. It is only out of the love of God that will bring you to be able to fulfill what God had called you to really do. If you are going to be looking around, these powers, four powers of darkness, unknown to children of God, will fight you behind the scene. The next thing you know, you have made a decision that you think that you are smart, but not knowing that it is the devil himself that has been driven you out of the purpose of God for your life. Amen? So, loving God is the greatest. It is the greatest because it's the greatest commandment. Mark 12, 30 to 31. The word says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. This is the first commandment. 31. And the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than this. Okay. So, between the two commandments, number one, God, number two, people, neighbor. 
Between the two, there is one that is greater than the other. The greater one is the first one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. So number one, God first. And number two, people. God first. And number two, people. Why God first? The book of John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. It says, we love him because he first loved us. We love God because he first loved us. What is the extent of God's love for our lives? Watch Ephesians 1, 3 to 4. It says, God has such a wonderful love for us. So, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now watch. According as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. We should be what? Holy and without blame before him in love. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And the extension is that God has chosen us before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. So in other words, every single thing that we have been called to do in the vineyard of the Lord must be proceeded from within. This one, you can't tell. You cannot tell. Man do not have the ability to read the heart of people. It is only God that sees the heart of people. So, if you want to serve God and be looking for people's approval before you work for God, forget it. It's a satanic device being used against you. If you are called at the vineyard of the Lord, you look unto God and him alone. The council, remember, he said that in order for you, for the purpose of God to be established upon your life, the counsel and the advice that he's talking about, it is the counsel and the advice from the Almighty God. From Almighty God. From the law of the Lord. So, and that is you standing and waging war. Waging war against foolish questions. Waging war against unnecessary genealogies. Waging war against contentions and strivings. And strivings. And keeping your life going. You are going by the power of God that is driven from within. Through the love of God. That, that you know, when we are in love, your heart is pumping, beating. Especially, you know, initially when, you know, two people come to love each other. And they are young and they are not married yet. When they marry, they get bored. But when they are not married yet, you know, one will just take one to the, uh, oh, let me, let me see you through. Uh, so you'll be walking her to her house. And then by the time that you guys, you guys get there, and then you start the conversation again. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then the next thing you know, another time is spent. And the other one will tell you, oh, okay, let me also see you through. And then uh, it can go on and on. Simply because... You don't want to leave each other. But the moment that we have given them the agreement that they can now be together in the matrimonial covenant of God, the devil said, hey, problems. Problems. You see how the devil is crafty. So people can remain in sin and he can keep that fire going, 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 going. The very day that they made the decision to come together onto God's plan, this is where hell will break loose. May we have understanding and maintain the covenant of God, establishing the purpose of God for our lives. That is why he said you have to wage war against such devices of the devil. Loving God is the greatest. Hallelujah. The book of Deuteronomy. The chapter is 30 and the verse is 15 to 20. The man of God, Moses, brought forth this word unto the people of God, Israel. He said, See, I have set before thee this day 
life and good. Watch, he didn't say life and death. He said life and good. And death and evil. You see how our minds are. Usually when we talk about the two, we say life and death. Okay? Bible talks about life and good. Death and evil. We don't talk about death and evil. We talk about life and good. Bible talks about life, life and good, and death and evil. Okay, so that is what Moses said. He said, I am saying these things because I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. So you see, that, is, that was an advice, a counsel from the man of God to the children of God that are walking towards the purpose of Almighty God, Canaan land. Moses told them, he said that if there is any advice that I can give you, in this journey where the Lord is taking you to live your lives, if you are going to live and be alive and be multiplying, there are some things that you must know as a child of God. He said, number one, advice. Love the Lord thy God. That is one. Number two, walk in his ways. Number three, keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment. If you do that, then you will see that you will live and you will multiply and the Lord your God shall bless you in the land where he is taking you. Hallelujah. Amazing. The fire that used to burn in you when you were in Africa looking for American visa. Looking for American visa. And you'll be praying, you are going for mountain and you are going for fasting. And you, I mean, you came, God opened the door, breakthrough door, and he gave you that visa. He took you to the land of America. Look at you today. Look at you. Come to church at your free time. You come to church. The same zeal is not there anymore. And the result is that we are dead in the land of called opportunity. Do you know that this country is called the land of opportunity? America, there is no country in the world that is called the land of opportunity. God's one is said the land that is flowing with milk and honey. America is called the land of opportunity. So there are opportunities in this land. We have come here and we wonder what we are going through. It looks like we have come to a land of unfortunities. And we keep swimming from one thing to another. We don't see the glory of Almighty God. Why do you think these things will not happen to us? When we used to serve our God in such a fire, we have come here and we are on fire for other things and God's stuff is, oh, when I have time. So once a while, once a while. That is why you are living a once a while life. Once a while breakthrough. Once a while healthy. Once a while... I mean, and it keeps going on. But if you will hear the advice, the counsel of the living God, and if you will be taking your God as the number one purpose of your life, and believing to serve him, walk on his ways, and watching his commandments and his precepts, definitely, heavens shall definitely be open upon your life. God shall establish you in the land we have other people that also came as foreigners who, and they are here and we look at them and they are very successful. They are doing very, very well. So it is not like the land of, you know, opportunity is not, it's not true. It is very true. But it is true today that are really, you know, doing the right thing to possess their possessions in the land. In the land. God gave it you have to fight for it. Listen to me. God gave it, but you have to fight for it. Basically, that is what he's telling them. And he said, in the battle that you are fighting, be very careful because this battle can be very, very crafty. 
Very, very crafty. Thank you, Lord. The same advice as Paul gave to, you know, to Titus. Moses said the same thing. He said the same thing to the people. He said, if this advice that I'm giving you, you take it, you'll be okay. If you don't, then in Deuteronomy 30, 17 to 18, he said, if thy heart turned away, in other words, if you reject the advice, thy heart turned away so that thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. <laughs> if you come here and you decide to worship your wake, if you come to America and you decide to forget about your God, this is what is going to happen to you. He says, verse 18, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passeth over to Jordan to go to possess it not wonder many are perishing many are even the ones that are not perishing <laughs> they are sweating moving forward you name it high blood pressure low blood pressure Right blood pressure, left blood pressure. Every pressure is coming upon you. And we have pressure from every corner. And we are not making it. Because our priorities are not right. Our love has been channeled to other things. And these are the things that are bringing us pressure. And at the end of the day, we don't even have, you know, to even say that, oh, this is the reward of what I have been working so hard for. When others will just give commandments for houses to be built. We spend nearly 50 years of our lives building a house. When others will just give commandments, they will come and show them architectural plans. And the next thing you know, everything is done. What you spend 50 years doing, somebody will use five months, if not shorter than that. You see machines coming in, a whole construction team coming in, and the next thing, and they will build something better than even if they were giving you 150 years. You will not be able to do that. Yet we are not taking wisdom. There is, there is a purpose of God that must be established in our lives, and that is the goodness of God. These things, they shall only be established when our heart, the heartbeat, is right in the sight of God. If you can hear God in your heart, if your heart can beat for God, what God says he's going to do for your life, it shall surely come to pass in your life. You know why? First Thessalonians chapter 5, and the verse is 24. It says, faithful is he who calleth thee. He also will do it. God is the one that is going to make the doing. God is the one that is going to do it. So God, if you are going to do it, why don't you get it done? Just do it like the Nike. And then we move on. He said, no, it doesn't work like that. The just, it is when I hear your heart beat after me. That is when things start happening. Because it is not now that I'm going to do it. We read it together. The Ephesians 1.3, blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, in Christ Jesus. So the blessings, it is not now that God is going to think of what you are going to do in America. The Lord before the foundation of the world, who called you to come to America, God already has a plan completely laid down for your life. What is your purpose? Be, let your heart be beaten for God and see that plan being manifested. The heart beats for God. Devil cannot do anything about it. If you establish your heart after the Lord, the counsel of the Lord is what is going to lead you in life. He said that the purpose is established by the counsel and good advice. Therefore, war. So every time that you'll be hearing the Lord leading you, God will tell you, stand up, pray, and you'll be praying. That is your time of war. 
Even when the Lord said, this one, the time is not yet. Wait for it. The waiting, you know what it means. It's not folding your hands and saying that next year God is going to do it. It is the time to rise and start waging war. That is the waiting on God. When people say, I'm waiting on God. You are waiting on God. I'm waiting on God for my husband. Okay, you can wait. Go lock yourself in the room. Don't pray. That husband will never come. Because the waiting that God is saying, he said there is a time for that purpose to be established. But till then, let your heart beat and then stand in my counsel. What is the counsel? Pray without season. Pray without season. Because what is holding your purpose to be established, it is the battle of the strong man on your way. Until that stumbling block has been removed, you will not move an inch. I know the thought that I think toward you, thought of peace and not evil. To bring you to the expected end. So you see, he's a God that is expecting us at certain end. When we don't give birth to a child today, and that child become a grown up the same day. Absolutely not. There is a time of growth. And God is expecting us to do exactly the same thing. When you are a child, you are a child. You need the counsel for the Lord to bring you to that expected end. In between, it's all war. That is what is called life. It's called life. And so many arrows of darkness to divert you from the purpose of God. Oh, they will show you other things that you can do. They will show you, oh, this is the business that people are doing. It is working. Yet, the Lord has called you to something else. And God said, wait. So instead of you waiting in prayer and calling upon the name of the Lord for the purpose of God to be established upon your life, what are you doing? Oh, let me also go and try. Let me also go and try. Your try, he said that when you go and you don't pay attention and serve the other gods, they will drag you outside the purpose of Almighty God and you will perish. This is how people are perishing. When you see people running life and going through all kinds of situations, you'll be thinking that, oh, uh, what, is, what is the Bible saying about all this? Bible says everything about life in general. You can't live your life outside God. Jesus made that statement. In John 15, 5, he said, without me, you can do nothing. If you are a child of God, the heart must be beaten for almighty God. And if the heart beats for God, with Jesus, you can do all things. All things are possible with God. All things are what are possible with almighty God. But it is possible with God. But when you come to God and your heart is after the Lord, all things are possible unto you. So, now, you make sure that you hear the advice and walk in that counsel. If you don't, we are still on Deuteronomy 30 and the verses 19 to 20. So, he said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. Meaning what? Moses, since God called him, the rest of his life was dedicated at the service of Almighty God for these people. Why is he calling heaven and earth? Everything that God, I mean that man is saying, God hears it. Everything that man is doing, God sees it. So whatever that Moses was telling these people, the Lord was hearing and seeing everything. Why Moses is calling heaven to witness and record this? against them. It is because Moses himself is also in the purpose of God. He's also running his own life, his purpose. The race of God that God has called him to live. He's also running his life. Pastor Charles is also having a, a race of life to run. It is not because you are preaching that you are exempt from it. Definitely everybody is going to stand before Almighty God. Everyone, everyone, this morning, First Peter, we were reading uh, chapter 4, and the verse was 17 and 18, especially the 17. He said that the time is come that the judgment shall begin in the house of God. The time is come that the judgment shall begin in the house of God. And I was like, okay, God, at least we are in your house. 
If you are bringing forth the judgment, why don't you start with those people? <laughs> Punish them first before you come to us. God said, no, that is not what I'm going to do. He said, I will start with my house and then before I go to them. And I said, ah, God, what is it? Then I started thinking about the whole situation. I said, that's right. The judgment of those that have not come to the Lord, that do not want to come to God, it is going to be very simple. They have decided not to come to God. In other words, they have rejected God. Already God, he knows that they said, we don't want you. That is why they did not come to Christ. So their judgment is going to be quick. It's going to be very, very quick. God doesn't have problems with them because they have already made the decision. We don't want you. Don't come to us. God said, don't worry. Not wanting me is okay, but I will come to you to lock you in hell. So why the house of God? The house of God is where God has a problem. Why? It is because you, that is in the house of God. Officially, people have come to know that you have chosen Christ as your Lord and Savior. So you come to church. But your coming to church does not qualify you to be with Christ in heaven. Let me say this again. Your coming to church does not qualify you to be with Christ in heaven. There are more into it. You come to church. In other words, they which have believed in God, they might be careful in doing good works. So now that we have believed in God, are you careful doing good works or you are careless doing good works? If you are careless doing good works, what is a good work when the work is done in carelessness? It is only God that can judge it. It is only, it might appear in the sight of man as something that is done. The work is done and it is good. It is only God that knows the heart that got that work done. God is accepting the work that proceeded from the heart of love, not a heart of striving and contention. Two people brought gift to God. Cain and Abel. Abel's gift was accepted and Cain's gift was rejected. It is not about the blood and the type of offering that was given. It was the heart that brought. The heart that brought. One's life. Abel's life is rightly accepted in the sight of God. And Cain's life was not accepted. This is the reason why God rejected you know, Cain's offering. So it is not about the gift. I am the Lord. He said, <laughs> heavens is my throne. The whole earth. It's my full stool. What a house that a man would build for me. What a house that a man is going to build for me. But there is one in whom I will have a regard. The one who hears my word and tremble at my word and contracts in the spirit. This is the one that I will have regard. This is the type of person when he brings gift to God, God will say, it is well accepted. Let your heart not having anything to do with God and faking in the sight of people and just telling, I'm singing in the choir. I am an usher. And you see, you are doing this thing so that every Sunday you can change. And you keep on doing this stuff and people see you moving around and displaying things. God sees your heart that is doing it. God is seeing the heart that is doing it. He sees it. So loving God is the greatest is because it is definitely going to establish your life, and you shall be saved. You play games, he said, foolishness will definitely destroy you, and you cannot play fools in, you know, in the church. So, the house of God. God does not have problem with those people. It is only they that are in the house that he has problems. So he's going to start first from the house to see who qualifies to be genuinely with him and who does not qualify and just was playing you know, games with the church. And I told you about this before. I said, if you are here and you come to church beside the word of God that will transform your life unto God's glory so that one day you will be saved and you keep playing games. Maybe it's music. Maybe it's uh, fashion. Maybe, I mean, entertainment and everything else that keeps you going. Amen and repent because it is not going to profit you. We are here. That is why Moses is calling heaven to 
come and record his testimony towards these people. I am saying the same thing. That day, you will not find Pastor Charles and ask Pastor Charles in, in, you know, at the gate of heaven saying that, Pastor, I will be just right there. Let me tell you where I will be. Christ will be there at the gate. I will be right behind Christ. And he will be like, okay, Pastor Charles, what are the faith victory members? I said this one, Auntie Mary, okay. Uh, and Auntie, yeah, okay. Auntie Grace, okay. And then as you are coming, you see, when, we, when I say okay, it means that you are going to pass in the scan of Jesus Christ. Like you are going to the airport, traveling to go and take the plane. They will scan you. Heaven will scan you. And as soon as you are scanned, that one, even your, the, the, the thoughts of your intestine will come out. If the intestines might be taken there. You can't hide anything from God. You cannot. You cannot. So everything will just come out. So there is no way that you say, ah, Pastor Chas, you didn't tell me about this thing. No. So this is exactly what Moses is doing. I call Deuteronomy 30, 19 to 20. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before thee, before you life and death, life and death, blessings and cursings, Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Oh, wow. It is taken to a higher level. Do you know that according to those scripts, this scripture here, your decision is not only limiting on you. You are also deciding for your children, your generations to come. The decision that you are making and it is very true. You watch. We will explain. Let's read that scripture again. Please let your heart be open. Don't let your heart sleep. Open your heart. Awake and hear the word of the living God. You see, he said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing, therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You and your family. You and your descendants. Thy seed is your descendants. Not only your children, your children's children to I don't know how many generations to come. Thy seed. So now, in verse 21 he said that Thou mayest love thy Lord, thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers, to Abraham to Isaac, to Jacob, to give unto them. Hallelujah. You come to this land of America, you mess up with God. Let me tell you, it is going to be very hard for your generations to call upon the name of the Lord. It is going to be very hard. Children, they are always looking onto the grown-ups. What you train your children to do, that's most likely what they might come to do. That is why the Lord is asking us to train our children. We have to train them. The training must be right. If you train them to play golf, they will be playing golf on Sundays and will be willing to become golf professionals. They will get well paid. There's no problem with that. But definitely, they will perish. We try to teach our children what we do best. We can't teach them what we don't know. We cannot teach them what we don't know because they themselves are, are being taught by other staff, by themselves. But it is your responsibility to check. A child coming from school and start using bad word that is not being used at that home. Where did he get that word from? School, outside. It is your responsibility to control and say that, no, 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 no. no. Where did you hear this from? No more. It's a bad word. Don't use it again. 
If you are taking your Sundays to teach your children the animals in the zoo, let me tell you, they will grow up in the zoo of the world and they will be teaching themselves all kinds of animals. Serious business that God is talking about here. Serious. You know, sometimes we wonder, we said, ah, <laughs> uh, a proverb in our country that says that when you are born on top of a mountain, it doesn't take you long to grow because you are born on top of a mountain. Meaning that if you are born in a family that is already rich, when people are struggling to pay their children's school fees, maybe you come to school and you are even driving what others are working that they can't even pay. They can't even afford it. But you at school, you are already driving it. And we see these things all the time. But you, you go back and you are even, you know, <laughs> fighting with the school fees. The parents are really suffering to even pay your school fees. If wisdom is not there, you will just be living life and be taking it for granted. You are a child. Your parents are working so hard to see you through. Either you are brought from Africa to here or you are born here. The result is exactly the same thing. At the end of the day, the Lord said that we should honor our parents. It is not your English that you speak. Because your English is fluent in the land. You are born here. Why are you even boasting of your English? The fact that your parents do not speak like you speak does not mean that they do not have the wisdom to give you the right advice to live your life. And this is said to all the young ones, especially in this ministry. You have to understand that God wants you to have a clear mind concerning your parents. In the establishment of God's purpose, your love for God will bring forth also your love for your parents. If they were that evil, they would have, you know, aborted you. Now that they have brought you forth, this is not the time to come and speak English in their face and be disrespecting your parents and coming to the church and be standing and singing in the choir. Hallelujah. Yet, your mother, your father is grieved. It cannot be accepted in the land where God wants you to, 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 to flourish. Wisdom. Wisdom. You don't have to be aged before you start doing the right thing in the sight of Almighty God. The Lord was calling people at the age of 17. Jeremiah, David, all these great men of God. 17. At the age of 12, with Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was sitting teaching the Pharisees, teaching, bringing forth the knowledge of God to the scholars, they that have known so much of God, they study God. A young boy of 12 years was already sitting down and they were amazed with his knowledge. You know everything about gaming, about I don't know what that is going, you know, I mean, uh, you, you mentioned every number. Number 23, oh, that is Michael Jordan. Uh, number 40, uh, you see, you know all of them. But when we ask you, what is Genesis 1-1? He said, ah, Genesis, it is not a basketball team. Look at you. Priorities. Priorities. Honoring the parents become very important because their approval it's a covenant word that will follow you. You can't say that you love God when you, you neglect your parents. The Lord wants to see you doing the right thing before you come here and you start doing anything. So our homes, that is what I have been saying all the time. Our homes must be run right. The children must know what to do. Parents must know what to do so that we shall flourish in the land. But when there is fire in that home, Uncle Sam is also coming with the bill and the fire is kindled on another, another level. Another level. And we can't flourish. Amen? Let's move on. Thank you, Lord. So, my last scripture. 
unto God's glory. Loving God is the greatest. If you love God, definitely whatever that you would do or whatever that people would do to you, if your heartbeat is after God, everything shall turn unto God's glory. Romans 8, the verses 26 to 28. Romans 8, 26 to 28. It says, likewise, the Holy Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Let me mark a pause here and explain. He said, likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Our infirmities meaning that nobody knows everything. There is no parent that knows everything. You can't teach everything to your children. Because there are so many things that they will learn by themselves in life. So we are not perfect. It is the advice and the counsel, the leadings of the Holy Spirit that guides us in life. That is why he said, likewise, the Spirit also help us in our infirmities. Infirmities meaning our weaknesses, areas that we are not strong. The Holy Spirit is given to help us in life. So now, what is this help that the Holy Spirit is given? Because he said that sometimes even when we have to pray for the right things, we don't pray for those things. So the Holy Spirit takes over and helps us. What is the prayer that you think the Holy Spirit will pray for you? The Holy Spirit is praying the purpose of God for your life. When you have come to America, when you set your heart after God and you love God, even if your prayer is not right, even if you do not know, exactly what God has reserved for you or God has for you in this land to have as you keep doing the right thing the spirit of God will intercede on your behalf interceding on your behalf meaning that he will be praying on your behalf even with wrong prayers that you are praying the Holy Spirit is praying the right prayer to God for you these things are so powerful that is why I keep saying that I said please set the heart right Set your heart right and don't worry about how things are going to be, you know, to be getting done or to, to get done. It is God that is doing it. Faithful is he who called you. He also will do it. So it is God that will do it. How is God doing it? God is working with his own spirit that he gave you and the spirit is interceding on your behalf. You will not know, but the spirit is interceding on your behalf. You will not know, but the spirit is interceding on your behalf. You will not know, but the spirit is interceding on your behalf. And he's praying the prayer. Oh Lord, let it come to pass. Oh Lord, direct him. Oh Lord, open the way. Oh Lord, break it. Oh Lord, cancel it. Oh Lord, and the Lord keep the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And you don't know, maybe you, this year, uh, uh, I, I command you, the latest Nissan, come to my life. Holy Spirit is standing. Let the breakthrough door be open. The breakthrough door be open. Because he might get to Princeton University. Because he might get to Harvard University. And the Holy Spirit is praying for you. You are praying for a car. He's praying for your school. He's praying for your school. So the Lord knows that we have that shortness as children of God. But therefore, he gave that Holy Spirit to intercede on our behalf. And verse 27 says that he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. This one is very important. The mind of the Spirit, the mind of the Holy Spirit. How would you know the mind of the Holy Spirit? He is not talking about you that is searching your heart. He said, if you, you will search your own heart, you will know the mind of the Holy Spirit. You, God knows you as a spirit being. If you will be searching the heartbeat, your heartbeat, uh -huh. then you will know the mind of the Holy Spirit. You cannot be having a heartbeat for basketball. We are not saying basketball is not good. Though. That's not what we are saying. We are talking about priorities. 
You cannot be having a heart that is beating to collect all garbages and be willing to hear the mind of the Holy Spirit. You can't. You have never been trained for it. You have never, never been trained for it. When even he speaks, you don't even hear how much more searching a spirit mind. This is not a small thing. But the one that is in line with the purpose of God, whose heart is constantly beating for God, even when the Holy Spirit lifts up his eyes, you hear. He beats in your heart like boom. He's knocking. You hear. So, let's continue. Very powerful scripture. He that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Ah, my goodness. He's making intercession for the saints according to the will of God. What is the will of God? The purpose of God. What is the purpose of God? That comes with time. What is that time? There is things for every season. What is that season? It is this, your season for the purpose of God to be accomplished. Who is bringing it to pass? The Holy Spirit. How do you know what God wants you to do? Even if you don't know. Oh, pastor, I re- I don't, I'm not really sure what God has called me to do. Continue searching for the Lord. Let your heart continuously beating for Almighty God. Continue loving him. Any area, anything that he puts in your heart to do at his service, continue doing it without contention, without grief. Continue. Because behind the scene, the Spirit of God is working. The Spirit of God is working the will of God for your life. The Spirit of God is looking, already looking for your husband to make sure that that man, whatever bandage that he's in, the Spirit of God is already working at that man's life. This is the one that is coming to be your husband. And the man is in bandage, but because of you, the Spirit of God is praying and working in that man's life. I said, the problem is not the man. The problem is you. The husband is not coming because he's tied down somewhere and you are carelessly busy with careless things and your purpose is delayed. But when you stand and you are standing, you keep praying, doing the right thing and the Spirit, even when you are not praying the targeted prayer, he said it does not matter because God knows what he had written concerning you. You will be in my vineyard with the right heart and see what I'm going to do. The children of God are not powerless children of God. They are not powerless. You have to see in the context where this popular scripture is coming in. What is that popular scripture? The popular scripture is Romans 8.28 that we are reading. He said, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And to them who are called, who are the called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. Ah, clap your hands for God. Clap your hands for God because this is so wonderful. You see the reason why a child of God must not be worried. When the Lord says don't worry. Be at his vineyard. Do the right thing. People let them say whatever that they want to say. They don't know what the spirit of God is doing behind you. They see you coming weak but you are strong in the Lord. They see you that you don't have it but the Lord is gathering for you. They see that you are not there yet but God is working things out. You will definitely get there and say hey how did it happen? It happened because there was a work that was being done behind. Powerful God that we serve. So there is no way that things will not work. That is why I have a motto that I'm always bringing forth. And that motto is what? It's, it is well. You call me pastor, da, da, da. I say, it's well. All is well. Bibia de di. Everything is well. It is what? It is well. No matter what the devil will do, I will tell you, it is well. No matter how much struggles you are going through, I will tell you that it is well. Because the heart that is beating for God, only God knows what he's doing behind the scene. You can't beat God. No one ever waged war with God and won. He's always the victory God. 
and it will not start with you. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord bless his purpose for your life. Let every handwriting of the Lord concerning you be established upon your life. In Jesus' name we worship. Let's say amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. To you alone be the glory.